Today, we delve into holistic healing and whole food nutrition with the Natural Health Authority, Jason Eagle of Strategic Healing. And now here's Jason. Okay, hey everybody, this is Jason Eagle, your Natural Health Authority. The number to call in is 313-272-5600. Again, that number is 313-272-5600. I'm live right now on Facebook. That's my Facebook channel. Uh, you can go to Strategic Healing and you can see me live. Um, and also um, connect in terms of put your questions in there. So, um, until we get some questions, I'm going to go over some of the things that I already have. This is Jason Eagle, your Natural Health Authority. I am what's called a QRA practitioner, or stands for Quantum Reflex Analysis Practitioner and Soft Tissue Specialist. So, the QRA, if you listen to the Dr. Bob Marshall show, uh, he will often say, you know, that sounds kind of complicated. Maybe you should go see a QRA prof professional. That's who I am. I am a referral practitioner, meaning if you call down to Texas and say, hey, I need somebody in my area, they'll give you my name. Um, I do the QRA testing, which is a way of going through and testing each one of your organ gland systems. It's essentially kind of like a modern car. When you take a modern car into a garage or you go into a modern garage now, they don't lift the hood up anymore. They don't poke around, they don't pull wires out. They just plug the computer in. The computer plugs into the integrated system and it sends a signal through the system. And if there's anything that is, whether it's a fuse that's blown or something is not working in terms of the specific parts of the, um, the car, it will tell you and it will come up with a code and say, hey, look at this, look at this. Well, that's what the QRA testing is, is we are non-invasive. I'm not taking any blood. I'm not poking or anything. I'm using what's called advanced kinesiological testing, muscle testing to uh, look at your body. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about muscle testing, a little bit more about energy and quantum mechanics and quantum health, I recommend that you go to YouTube and you go to a channel that's Dr. Tent's channel, DHS or Diverse Health Systems. And his latest video that he did just about a month and a half ago was on energy. And that one is the one that he's been waiting to do for about 40 years. And he explains very well. And in fact, he's the reason that one of the reasons that I got into what I'm doing, he was the very first doctor or chiropractor that ever did muscle testing on me and when the muscle testing was done on me I started laughing I still laugh right now and many people when I test them they laugh because it's like are you kidding me I can't believe that that's how that works and it's so fun but you know that it works you know that your body's responding so it's as if your organs are telling the practitioner yes I need this yes this is what I need then another part of what's called quantum reflex analysis is since everything in our body is controlled by our neurology, meaning our brain, neurology is all electromagnetic. And electromagnetic is, is these invisible waves, um, just like Wi-Fi. You can talk to a person on a phone when you're connecting wire to wire. That's called a landline phone. But now if you got a cell phone or listen to the radio, where are those Where's that transmission? It's in the air. It's in what's called the ether. And it's going through these waves that are going through your body, going through the walls. And you just can't see them. Well, that's what our body is. Our body is running the show through these electromagnetic frequencies. Okay? Well, just like fuses in an electronic is you can blow a fuse. So let's say you fall down and you hurt your back or you get, let's say, um, a, a car crash, or when you're a kid, you fall down and you bust your chin open. You got to get stitches. Well, if you could see what happens with many of these traumas, especially in the spinal cord, is that it creates what's called an interference field, meaning it tore some muscles, uh, it tore some tendons and micro tearing and stuff like that. Um, but your body is supposed to heal that. No, the way that your body heals anything is it first puts scar tissue, just like if you break your arm. You're going to put a bandage on it or you're going to put a cast on it to immobilize it because if it's wobbly, you're going to keep hurting it. And so it's kind of like if you glue something together, you wait for the glue to dry in order for it to kind of set. But then after the glue is dry, you have to strip that glue off and then bring it back to its original functionality, including its original flexibility. Well, the worst 
traumas are the ones of the spinal cord or the spinal, uh, the vertebrae, is that we can form the scar tissue in there, but the scar tissue never gets taken away. It gets stuck in the first phase of healing. And as this webbing starts to form, it starts to pinch on blood vessels, but also pinch on the nerves and pinch on the magnetic field. So like putting up a, a lead wall where these waves can't go through. So many times when people are having problems with their body in terms of their organs, meaning gallbladder problems, heart problems, um, pain in a knee, uh, take your pick of anything that you're talking about because every single part of your body is controlled through this neurologic mechanism. And in fact, pain is that signal. Pain is a signal. Um, swelling is a response to a signal. So if the signal is off by restoring the connectivity, and that's what the mud packs are. So sometimes people, there's no amount of supplements or no amount of therapies or other things that will work. Um, you have to restore the electrical conductivity. You got to turn the computer back on. You got to fix these blown fuses. And then when the fuses are repaired, now the body's able to work. Well, the way that you fix these fuses, rather than being a neurologist, meaning cutting you open and splicing these nerves together, they don't need to be spliced together because they already are together, but it's the magnetic field that's blown out. And again, watch this video. Go to YouTube and watch Dr. Tent's, um, it's Diverse DHS or Diverse Health Systems. He's got a YouTube channel and his latest one on energy. It's probably about an hour and a half or something like that. And he goes into the science of this. This is science. This is well documented science. Quantum reflex analysis is based upon very specific science. And in fact, the the kinesiological testing that I do is what's called a modified. Uh, O-ring test, which was developed by Omura. And Dr. Omura is this Japanese doctor who is actually still alive. He, he is a professor at New York University Medical School. He also is in China and he goes back and forth. But he also has a whole bunch of YouTube videos that he did way back in, these were all on videotape and they were done back in the 80s. And you can look up what's called B-DORT or Bi-Digital O-ring test or Dr. Omura. O-M-U-R-A, and you'll find a whole bunch of videos of him doing this work and explaining. And he went then and had this patented. There's a patent, and I can even give out, I give out the patent number. You can go on, on Google and pick up the patent. It's a medical patent on what's called this kinesiological test, the uh, dig, bi-digital O-ring test. And what a medical patent means is, is now you can make a patent for, let's say, a machine that is a you know, nose clipper or whatever. But anything that's a medical patent, it has to go through what's called double-blind university proven studies. It has to be have not only proof of concept, it has to work. And it has to be tested by multiple different scientists in multiple different studies. And if it comes through and it does what it says it does and it doesn't, <laughs> you know, it doesn't turn out to be a fake, then it is able to get what's called a medical patent, which is those the, the most verified of all the patents, which is, oh yeah, it's for sure, it's true. And we've gone through and looked at this and everybody has tried to break it, trying to find the holes, and there are no holes, it works. So what's called the bi-digital O-ring test is the most verified uh, of what's called, but all of the kinesiological test, whether it's the deltoid test, that means when the doctor or, or the practitioner pushes down on your arm, you're testing the deltoid. You're not testing the muscles. What you're testing is the brain. And when you're testing the brain, you're testing the energy. Everything is just energy, okay? So what quantum reflex analysis, and then I'll get into what's called the soft tissue work, which is sometimes you gotta work on people. Sometimes you have to push on things. Sometimes you have to massage things. Sometimes you have to twist people. Sometimes you have to physically work on people. And so that's what I do is I'll test your body, but I will also physically work on you from time to time if it's needed. And many times, you know, that's one of the things that's missing in many people's, whether you call it uh, medical or, or health care is number one, nobody listens to you. They take 
five to ten minutes and go, okay, yep, and they don't listen to your story. They don't tell you what's going on. And number three, they don't touch you. They don't touch you anymore. They don't move this. Oh, but whereas the old doctors, the old timers, that's what they do, like osteopaths. Osteopathic medicine is, 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 is it takes the longest to become an osteopath in terms of medical school because you got to go to standard medical school, but you have to go to these other schools where you learn how to manipulate people. Chiropractors are great manipulators, meaning they learn all about the body, but they learn that by putting the body back in place, what you're really doing is, is moving these electromagnetic towers. That's what your your vertebrae are, is they are like these electromagnetic towers. And when the cell phone towers are out of alignment, the signal gets dropped. It's just the same thing, okay? So your neurologic field is based upon physiology being in the right place so that the electromagnetic field can transfer. But sometimes the body's out of place or the organs are not working correctly because they're not receiving the signal. So if you're able to reestablish the signal connection, then your body, if you just give your body what it needs, it will fix itself. It will, you know, give me the food, give me the rest. Sleep is probably one of the, the best medicines. It is. We would die without enough sleep. You know, God designed us so that a third of our life, or maybe it's a half, I don't remember, but it's a huge part of our life, is spent sleeping. So obviously it's important. And, you know, you'll get many people that are busy people going, I wish I could just do without sleep. No, you don't. No, you don't. You'd go crazy. You'd go nuts. We need sleep. We need dreaming. We need the brain to send these signals through REM stage sleep that helps to basically, like your computer, your computer needs to shut down and it needs to do a clean and it needs to do a defrag and it needs to do an antivirus scan. Our body is the same exact way. And so the number one antivirus scan of our immune system is actually through sleep. Okay, so now, again, the number to call is 313-272-5600. This is Jason Eagle. I kind of explained <laughs> what a quantum reflex analysis practitioner is. Now let's get into some of the things that I found, some of the things that I know, some of the things that I can do to help you. Okay, let's go back again to what I did last week, which is, because I've had a number of people after I talked about it, which is this thing called phytozymes and prednisone. I've had many people who have heard me say, hey, yeah, you know, uh, you're right. My doctor put me on prednisone and I have to because I'm on so much pain, osteoarthritis and all this other stuff. But they've told me that I really shouldn't stay on it for the rest of it. And the longer that I'm on, it's doing damage. And But they have not given me any alternatives. There's nothing that I can do in place of it that will reduce the pain and reduce the you know, I've had people with like, say, scleroderma and some of the other things where you're forming the scar tissue because scar tissue is what forms pain. Prednisone. So when you get to joint pain and things like that, we put you on prednisone, which is a steroid. Um, and it helps to, to basically turn off the pain receptors and you know, do something in the body that kind of you don't really want to do. You know, you don't really want to just send it away and say, okay, just shut up and go hang out in their closet. It doesn't make it go away. It doesn't go to the source of it. Anytime we have pain, pain is a signal. So it's the same thing. It's like when Lassie shows up barking, she's not being annoying and she's not looking for a treat like another dog. She's a super dog. She shows up and she's going, rawr, 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 rawr. she's telling you that somebody's stuck in a well or somebody, follow me. But, you know, most people say, ah, get away from me, dog, you bother me. Or can somebody just put a muzzle on this dog? You know, doctor, give me something to make this pain go away. And then when it goes away, then I can go about my life and forget it ever happened. No, that's disease. That's disease of the brain. That's disease of the... And that, that will cost you. That will... Because if you, you know, put something aside that is an emergency, it's like putting tape over that check engine light. Yeah, you won't see it. It won't bug you. It won't annoy you. But you'll go down the road at some point, and it, it will it will stop the car. It pain is that light, and you do not want to put tape on it. You do not want to block it out. You want to go to the source of it and say, okay. Now sometimes pain needs to be blocked because it's such an immunosuppressive, and and it really damages the body. 
So there's like, again, the phytozymes, what it does is these are enzymes that uh, what's called proteolytic enzymes and it digests protein because fibrin is what's making scar tissue, excess fibrin. Now again, fibrin is also what makes your blood clot together too much. So when people are getting, let's say, congestive heart failure or things like that, or, or they're getting clogs in terms of even the cholesterol clogs, the fibrin binds that together. It's a glue that binds, which is important. So if you cut yourself, you want to be able to clot so that it stops. You want a mustard plug to form so you don't keep bleeding out. And there can be, you know, uh, bleeds inside our body, in your intestines. So they happen all the time, but our body through the clotting factors. But if we build up too much excess fibrin, we're going to form, you know, these this excess tissue. And scar tissue is the thing that's in your joints and things. And what it does is it clamps down on the blood flow so that you can't get as much blood flow. So your knees are literally starving. It's like putting a paper bag or a plastic bag over its head. And it's in pain because it's, it's, it's not getting enough oxygen. It is suffocating. It blocks out blood flow. It blocks out the immune system. Many times when we have pain in the joints, it's because these joints have become so lack of blood flow and oxygen that we get bacteria that form in there and we get other living vi viruses live in there and they start to literally eat because they're living in there. So they got a home to live in and with a bunch of food all over the place, your joints and your bones and things like that, and they will start to dissolve your body and then create an acid. Basically, <clears throat> they're like you and I, which is they eat and then they have to poop. Well, their poop is acid and it will dissolve your bones. So osteoarthritis, where you see the knuckles just start to fuse together and all, it's because it's, you know, one of the things is if you were to test people in terms of, let's say, stick a needle in there and pull some of that fluid out, you could culture it and you would find a whole bunch of really nasty things living in there. And in particular, what's called anaerobic materials, anaerobic bacteria, And they, again, they eat your body, but then they create a waste product that's an acid that dissolves your body even more so. So again, how do we, we head this off at the pass? The phytozymes, the phytozymes, which is these proteolytic enzymes, you take two of them on an empty stomach three times a day. That's, that's more than enough more than enough of what's called these proteolytic enzymes to go through your bloodstream. The reason that you take it on an empty stomach is because if you take it with food, it's going to digest your food. You don't want it to do that. You want it to digest the excess of your body. You want like, you know, the anti-hoarding person. You want those, you know, like that show of hoarders. You want these people to come in and go, you know what? I know that you can't do it. I'll do it for you. You just sit there and watch me and maybe we'll get your friends in. And we're not even going to ask you if you want this or not. We're just going to throw it out. In fact, take her on vacation. <laughs> because if she sits there watching it, she's going to, oh, no, no, I really need that. No, you don't. Like, so let's just get rid of her and, and you know, occupy her or, or him so that we can then get rid of this excess stuff. That's what the phytozymes does. That's what proteolytic enzymes does is when you put it in your bloodstream, it will scavenge throughout your body and will start dissolving this excess fibrin. It will even do it directly in your bloodstream, which it will start to get rid. But see, it's not a blood thinner. So the thing is, is when you've got a person who, who has too many clotting factors and, and then they'll put them on a blood thinner like aspirin or something else. The problem that when you go on blood thinners is that if you do have a bleed out, if you thin the blood too much, then it will not clot and then you will can bleed out. So you're playing a game when you're thinning the blood to keep it from clotting too much. So this is what the, the phytosems does, is it does not thin the blood that way. It gets rid of the excess protein or the excess fibrin that glues all this stuff together. Okay, so again, people, like I said, I've had a number of people who said, yeah, that's a great idea. Instead of taking all this prednisone, let's get on the phytosems. You take two, three times a day on an empty stomach. All right. So the number to call in here is 313-272-5600. This is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority. And we're taking your questions on health. And uh, also Facebook, you can go to my Facebook page, which is Strategic Healing. I'm live right now. And uh, you can have questions. And Now I'm going to go to this other one. I had a person, um, She, my wife is an adult gymnast. 
She's 41 years old and she is, in fact, she's competing this weekend. And she competes as uh, an XL. She's a, what would be equivalent of a level eight. She competes with 12 year olds. <laughs> she, you know, she's the oldest. She's the, <laughs> when I'm in the stands, I call her grandma. <laughs> Thank God she doesn't get too mad at me. And I go, yay, go grandma, because she's the only one out there. Like the, usually the oldest in her group would be maybe 18 years old, but most girls, uh, when they reach 18 years old, they've had some sort of trauma, they've broken something, and they can't do it anymore. Well, that happened to her when she was, I don't remember how she old she was, she got out of it, but then got back into it in her 20s, late 20s, I think it was late 20s, early 30s, and now is able to then compete, right? Well, she goes to this adult gymnastics camp, which is, there's a, there's a number of adult gymnasts all over the world, not very many of them, and not very many of them that are actually competing. Most of them are just doing it for fun. Well, there's this camp out in New Hampshire that we go to in the summertime, and it's kind of like an, an adult gymnastics camp. And so there's this couple that, that run it out there, and she put a question into me about creatine. I did a show uh, last year I talked about, or last week I talked about creatine, but I don't think I talked enough about it for her. So I'm going to talk about creatine a little bit more. Creatine is this powder, what's called creatine monohydrate, okay? And creatine is this thing that a lot of bodybuilders take, a lot of athletes take it because it's a, what helps, it, it was called an ATP promoter. It actually helps you to build ATP. And ATP, that's what the muscles run off of, okay? So, and we have to have what's called ATP reserve. So when a person is working out, if you run out of ATP, you're gonna run out of fuel, and then what's gonna happen is, is you're gonna build up too many waste products of what's called lactic acid. So one of the problems of people working out is that if you work out beyond what you have ATP, then your body will start building excess amounts of lactic acid. And lactic acid is that stuff that burns in your, like if you've worked out in your legs and then like really a, a lot, and then the next day you can barely sit down on the toilet, like it hurts, okay? So creatine helps to stop that in terms of, um, helps buffer lactic acid that builds up in the muscles during exercise, okay? Creatine also promotes the body anabolic Balic phase for increased protein synthesis, which supports lean body mass and muscle strength. Okay, what that means is, is what I talked about last week, which is who should be taking creatine. Athletes should be taking creatine because it helps you in your recovery phase. And it actually helps to put water into the muscles. If you look at muscles, they look like like hot dogs, like, you know, a package of hot dogs, frozen hot dogs. They're long um, uh, cells, but they're all kind of sandwiched together, okay? Well, when you build muscle, you don't add more muscle fibers. You only have, you only have a certain amount of muscle fibers. You're not ever going to add any more. What you do is when you work out, you tear these muscles. You do micro tearing. You tear some of the fibers. And then what your body does is puts a Band-Aid on them, and that's then adding more muscle tissue, which is it's not adding more cells. It's just making the cells bulkier and bigger because they tore, and then they get taped over and repaired. Well, that's the whole point of, of building muscle, okay? So I brought up last week, which is who is really the people that, beyond the athletes, who should be taking creatine? Older people, anyone over 50 years old, because one of the big things as we get 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, they start losing muscle mass. And then one of the biggest muscles that you lose, so I'll talk, the biggest muscles that we lose is we lose in our legs. We lose uh, the quads and the hamstrings, but the quads in particular, they are the largest muscles in the body. And what's probably one of the number one killer of older people falling down and breaking a hip, fault balance issues, or not being able to get up and down steps. Why? Mostly, and it's not just the balance, because they've lost all this muscle mass and they can't eat enough protein, so they'll put them on Insure and stuff like that, And but it's it doesn't really work because their digestion is low, they can't digest the protein. So creatine is this thing that helps you maintain and build uh, muscle mass and muscle strength. And again, who's the other person 
that uh, one of the other things that is, is as we get older, what muscle starts to fail on us? It's the heart muscle. The heart muscle is this thing. Now, if we've had a, a doctor that has had to put you on statins or something like that, as I said last week, creatine, if after you're getting off of statins, you should be on a creatine. And if you are on statins, you should be on a CoQ10 because it stops your ability to make CoQ10, which is energy. You run out of energy and, and run out of energy for the heart. Okay. So, but then let's get into, like I was saying before, which is there's multiple different types of creatine. This is what's called creatine monohydrate. And creatine monohydrate is the cleanest source and the type that Premier Research Labs, the only stuff that I sell is Premier Research Labs. It's because they are the cleanest on the planet. Everything that they do is verified through multiple lab assays. Plus they open their labs up to the government to come in for, you know, the problem of the supplement field the supplement world is it's unregulated meaning they don't have to answer to anybody and they can put anything in there you know years ago it was found that in baby formula this milk or this uh what they were doing the chinese were making baby formula and they were putting what's called melamine in it and melamine is what those like plastic plates are made out of the reason is, is because melamine, and it's toxic, it will kill you. It creates liver toxicity. There was a bunch of babies here in America and all over the world that actually got toxic liver and died because they put this melamine in there. Now, why would they put melamine? Because melamine is, if you test it, it tests like a protein. And so the lab, if they don't know how to test for the melamine and toxins and they're just testing for protein, they'll go, oh, this looks good. Looks like you got 20% protein in here. That's great. Okay. So the, uh, what you would call the supplement world is, oh my God, it is so corrupt. There are so many times where Premier Research Labs have tested stuff and they found through their different testing methods that, wow, this is grass clippings. This is not alfalfa at all. This is not carrots. This is cornstarch that's dyed orange or like they put the good stuff in the barrel at the top but they hide a bunch of sawdust and stuff and nobody knows and if you, once you bought it like too bad you bought it so premier research labs is the only one but they also they bring in so since they it's unregulated they've chosen to to submit themselves to regulations so, which means it keeps them honest but it so that means also that you as the public can trust what they do and so the and again creatine if you go to a lot of health food stores and creatine is one of these things that can be very toxic and it can be not what it says it is and i don't trust stuff that comes from you know other health food stores and stuff i do not trust it at all but i do trust what comes from premier research labs because i've been there i've been to the labs i go every year and i know what they do and again they are what's called gmp which is a good manufacturing processes, which is that is a government agency. You don't get that seal of approval until they've come in and verified it and said, yep. And they come in ever so often, they go, yep, it is what it says it is. And we've tested it and take it to independent labs and everything like that. So creatine is this thing that I really, really recommend for a lot of different people, not just in the athletic world, but again, as we get older, because it helps to maintain muscle mass, helps to maintain the brain. It helps to hold fluid in your your tissues and in particular in your brain um, so that your brain works better. So as we get older and older, our brain now starts to work better, okay? This is Jane, uh, uh, well, actually, as we get older and older, our brain doesn't work better, but we want to make it work better. So we've got to work on things to make our brains work better, okay? So this is Jason Eagle, your Natural Health Authority. The number to call in is 313-272-5600. You can go to my YouTube channel, that's Strategic Healing, and um, you can see me there. Now let's go into another one, um, which is uh, airborne allergies. Airborne allergies, meaning I'm breathing stuff in, whether it be pollen or other things like that. Um, but also that we can have allergies to toxins that are out there. We can also like people breathing in these viruses and things like that. Again, uh, we can be allergic and it's not an allergy is, is basically having a reaction to anything that we kind of breathe in it, that can be toxic or even non-toxic. So for instance, you know, mold or uh, not mold, but um, uh, what was I was going to say pollen 
okay, pollen and things like that, there are people who breathe it in and they're not reacting to it. But there are many people, or like I'm going to talk later, there's another question I had about mold. Again, allergy, airborne allergy would be mold. Now, black mold is a very, very important thing to not have because it is toxic. And if you breathe black mold in, now there are other molds that people are super sensitive to it and, and other people are like, eh, it doesn't bother me. Their immune system doesn't attack it. And regular mold, unless you're living in a super moldy house, if you come across a little bit of mold, your body really should be able to handle it. But nobody should be able to handle black mold. So this was another question that came in. I'm kind of linking these two together, which is because it's airborne, okay? So black mold. Black mold is something that can form in your house if you have a water leak. So let's say you have a roof leak. Let's say you have a roof leak year after year or a basement leak. Now black mold can be inside the drywall and it can get inside um, the boards and the fabrics and everything like that. And if a person has black mold in their house, it is, now some people can be hyper reactive to it. And then you can have other people that it doesn't, they don't really react to it, but they may get, say for instance, lung cancer later. Same thing with like radon. It's very toxic to the body. So number one is we want to make sure that leaks are plugged and, and things like that. Have a good insurance and insurance should take care of it, but you should do due diligence. Now, if, if a person really is concerned of, do I have black mold in my house? There are kits that you can get. And um, the kits that you would go, like I know Home Depot has them or Lowe's. There are send away kits. The ones that you want are not the scrape ones. So like for like lead uh, paint, you would scrape a piece of off and or you rub this little thing on it. And if it turns a color, it has lead in it. You can do that for mold, but you don't want that one. What you really want for the black mold is the one that they actually, you set it in a room. So let's say set it in a basement or set it in a closet or set it in the attic. And in fact, you buy like four or five of them and you set them all over the house and then you close the door and then you leave it there. And quite frankly, you, you leave it in a room that you, so if it's in, let's say a bedroom, you want to test the bedroom. Well, really you, you, testing the basement and the attic and stuff like that, because those are the furthest places away from where you live. And if it's there, then it's going to be where you live. And so you set these things down and then you, I think you come back a couple days later and it will show because it's spores and these spores will grow on this. And if they grow and there's enough black mold in the air, then that's enough to be toxic to your body, right? Now, if we've got black mold, boy, oh boy, number one, you get all the insurance and you do a remediation. And sometimes the remediation is such where you can't ever live there anymore. You really, if you have a really, for instance, a overactive immune system, there are some people where literally it's like, sorry, you've got to sell that house or that house that needs to be demolished or whatever because it got in there. And, you know, like, for instance, if the house burns too bad and smoke gets into it, you're never going to get that smoke out. Smoke is nowhere near as bad as the black mold. The black mold can get in your body and, and it gets in the brain, it gets in the lungs, it can spread like a mold in your system. And it can, like it grows in the drywall, it can grow in your body. It can grow in your guts, it can grow in your sinuses, and it can be, uh, it creates what's called um, these cytotoxins, in particular, it creates cyanides. So like a cyanide pill will kill you? Well, the black mold creates cyanides that you're breathing arsenic or cyanide, this type of thing, but it's inside your body. So that's a very, very important thing to get out of the house, and like I said, you want to test for it, okay? But let's go back to the um, allergy type of things, meaning... People that have hay fevers and things like that, you know, could I ever, like, I do the allergy shots and stuff like that, and then I have to do, like, uh, take all of these different allergy drugs, which they're really not a good idea because they're turning off your immune system that's essential for you. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to fix your immune system. So there's a really good product called the Allercaps, and one of the biggest things that we find with allergy overreactions is it's the liver and it's the adrenals. Now, first of all, talking about the liver, the liver can become very toxic. The liver can become, uh, especially here in America, is the foods that we eat are very, very hard on our liver. 
we don't eat a lot of liver cleansing foods. We don't eat the milk thistle. We don't eat a lot of, like over in Europe, they eat a lot of liver cleansing things just in their natural diet. The bitter things, okay? The bitter things are good for your liver gallbladder. So that's why, let's say, the greens that are the bitter greens, that would be like mustard greens, and that would be like endive, like radicchio, those types of things, parsley, these types of things are very good. Now we also get into the mushrooms. So the allercaps has a lot of these mushrooms and uh, what we call uh, reishi mushroom. Reishi helps to rebuild your liver. So let's say a person is has had cirrhosis of the liver. Okay, You can actually repair the liver uh, or a person that's had hepatitis or something like that and that's damage of the liver. You can repair your liver. The reishi mushroom, the cordyceps, um, uh, and then another thing that's very important is what's called NAC, N-acetylcysteine. That's in the Eller caps. And this tag teams on another question that I had, which is people, so this is allergy. So let's say people get the stuffy nose all the time. Or let's say you catch a cold and your nose is just all plugged up and you just can't breathe. And so you want to take these allergy medications. Well, is there something natural that you could do that's better? Yes, the aller caps helps with, uh, in terms of like the allergy types of things, it tries to quiet down. But let's say you got sick and your nose is all plugged up. You take what's called N-acetylcysteine and what it will do is it will make your nose then run like a faucet. So you take like three to four caps of these a day and then a nose that's completely plugged up that you can't breathe out of, it will then start flowing and people go, well, I don't want that. I just want it to go away. No, you do. You want it to start flowing so that you can blow your nose and get rid of this mucus because your mucus has grabbed onto something that is doesn't want it to get into your, your bloodstream. So uh, whether it be a virus or whether it be bacteria, these types of things, the mucus is there in order to protect it from getting inside your body. So you want to, it's like a glue. So this glue grabs onto the stuff and you want to eliminate it. You don't want to be just stuck there because if it sticks inside your sinuses too much, it will then get right into your bloodstream. So um, N-acetylcysteine is a thing that helps to make the nasal passages flow, opens them up. But again, N-acetylcysteine, how does it do this? Because now how does my nose and my sinuses have anything to do with my liver? I thought my, my nases, my sinuses are up in my head and my liver is down like in my chest. It's like in my, or like underneath my lungs. That's where your liver is. How does that, well, because your liver pulls in, it's a filter. It filters out all of the toxins in the body. Plus the liver produces um, enzymes are, and as well as um, uh, immune system, uh, what's called cytokines. It, it produces these infection-fighting, scavenging things in the body. The liver does, uh, oh my God, so many different things in the body. It's just such an important organ. And like a filter, let's say a filter that's inside your a HEPA filter that you have in your, your um, um, vacuum cleaner, that can get clogged up and that can get jammed up. And so doing liver cleanses are very important. Like I said, the milk thistle and stuff like that. But if your liver becomes, starts to get damaged, and one of the things that can damage livers is too many painkillers. So the painkillers like in particular called the over-the-counter NSAIDs, like Advil, which is ibuprofen, acetaminophen, that's Tylenol, even aspirin, these different types of things. Uh, the, um, you know, take your pick, all of the, the Aleve, which is sodium naproxen. The ones that are some of the most damaging to the liver, especially if you take them long-term, is Tylenol, acetaminophen, is long-term use damages your liver, almost like an alcoholic liver, cirrhosis of the liver. Alcoholics, people who drink too much, can damage their liver. So what do they use to repair the liver from an overdose or, or damage from the liver from overdoing these, these medications? N-acetylcysteine. That's this, um, this pill, this natural pill that I was talking about. It helps to rebuild the liver and heal the scar tissue in the liver and rebuild and then clean the liver out, which will then clean the sinuses out because a lot of times... When our sinuses are all clogged up and the allergies are all clogged up, it's because our liver's all jammed up and it's not sending the right immune system. It's overdoing the immune system responses. 
And so now the nasal passages, they become over-inflamed because they come, they're like on a hair trigger. So like, again, people who breathe a little bit of mold and should be fine or a little bit of pollen, but it just makes them all plugged up. It's not the sinuses that are the problem. The sinuses are a backup liver. So if the liver is being clogged up, let's clean the liver up and then the sinuses work better. This is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority. The number to call in is 313-272-5600. Um, my uh, YouTube, or I, later uh, I post this on YouTube, which is my YouTube channel is Jason Eagle QRA. And right now you can see me live on my Facebook, which is my Facebook page, Strategic Healing. Let's go to another one, which is back problems. People that have had, let's say, um, a compressed disc, or let's had a herniated disc or a uh, ruptured disc or any anything like that and you haven't had surgery yet or even if you have had surgery the answer to like the disc is squirting out because it's compressed because your vertebrae like are two cinder blocks and your disc is like an inflatable tire that's in between it right well as these discs as these cinder blocks squish together what happens is is the the disc starts to bulge out well could the disc go back in place could the disc actually not be pinching on the nerves yes if you do what's called decompression meaning just create more space in between those vertebrae and now the disc is able to then go back into where it's supposed to be and it back to where it was when you were a kid which is the correct disc space okay so you know chiropractors are really good at this in terms of moving things and creating more disc space but there's some things that we could do and a lot of chiropractors poo poo this but there's some good chiropractors who go no, this is great, which is spinal decompression through what's called a hang-up, which is or an inversion table. Teeter is this company that makes these hang-ups, which is you hang upside down or really 45 degrees is all you really need to do. You get into this machine thing and it's not a machine. It's not, it doesn't, it's not electricity. It's like, it's like a little bed that you click your, um, your heels into or your ankles in it and then what it does is it allows you to hang upside down from your heels or from your ankles because they are clicked in there and so that you then hang upside down and so instead of gravity compressing you down gravity then pulls your vertebrae apart which is it creates compression or decompression now there's actually a uh, you can use this as a tool. Dr. Marshall talked about this and I've done it myself and I, especially if people are beginning to use decompression, what you you would think that if you hang all the way upside down, that's how we're going to spread it apart the best. No, that's not the best way to do it. Because if your spine starts to decompress too fast, your muscle goes, whoa, 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 wait, wait, and then they tense up and then it crunches down. And uh, then you'll get into a muscle spasm and in fact, you're just kind of fighting against it. So the best way to do spinal decompression is to actually not only from the outside pull it apart, but more importantly, use the fluid that's inside your spine, which is that's the spinal cord. The cerebral spinal fluid is inside your vertebrae and it's a hydraulic fluid. And if you could pump that fluid up, that would spread your, your vertebrae apart better than an outside force. So the way to do that is, is you get the um, what's called the inversion table or the hang up and you do a 10 minute session of where you lay where you're completely flat like you're level with the floor for a count of um, 20 seconds and then you go to where you're only 45 degrees now the these decomp or the hang ups or the um, uh, inversion tables they have a little strap on them so that you can't go all the way you make it so the strap goes so that you can only go 45 degrees and that's all you really want to go is about 45 degrees where your head's hanging down towards the ground but not straight up and down 45 degrees and so you count 20 seconds there and what you do is for 10 minutes you bounce back and forth going from 
10 minutes, or I'm sorry, 20 seconds flat, and then 20 seconds, 45 degrees, and then 20 seconds flat, and then 20. The reason for 20 is because anything over 20, your body will then start to recoil, and your muscles will start to cinch back up again, which will then kind of, you know, it's reverse of what you're trying to do. But if you do it up to 20 seconds, it's, uh, you're stopping this recoiling process before it happens. But what you're also doing is you're getting your cerebral spinal fluid to pump on the inside, which that will then spread your, your discs apart. That will spread your vertebrae apart. And I've had so many people who have had horrible back problems, sciatic problems, lumbar problems, and things like that. Uh, they had a car crash or something like that. Um, and then they started using the decompression table, and now they're back to normal. Now they're out of pain. You know, people with bad backs, they can be extremely debilitating in terms of you can bear, if it's bad enough, you can do nothing. You can't even, you know, walk across the floor. And like, you know, you suddenly become old man. You know, a bad enough back injury, if you're 18 or 20, you can be like an old man. Well, this is a process of being able to decompress the spine because decompression is the answer. If you saw where the pain is coming from, it's because your vertebrae are now squished together. They're too close and it's pinching on the nerves or it's stretching the nerves. So spinal decompression with a hang up or uh, an inversion table is highly recommended. Um, if you got spine problems, and you know, they're not super expensive, but they're a great investment. And uh, I, it's helped me dramatically and helped a ton of people. This is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority. The number to call in is 313-272-5600. I'm answering your questions on health. These are questions that I've had from over the weeks, and uh, I'll just keep going. This one, this question is on night sweats. Women that have menopause, that have the night sweats, that, you know, because there are many women. So what is menopause? It's basically you've stopped ovulation, you've run out of eggs, and you no longer are going to have menstruation because you don't have any eggs anymore, right? And women, they only have a, a finite amount of eggs, and when they run out, they're done. Well, is it written in stone that you're going to have to have problems from that? Meaning, like my mother had them, night sweats. I remember being with my mother and she would go from freezing to sweating hot. Like it would be like, okay, turn the air conditioner on. Okay, no, no, turn the heat on. And it would happen and just like, boom. And I, I've seen women suffer with this, okay? Well, number one, one of the big things is, uh, where's this coming from? And what's the difference between a, a woman that has, like, I breezed through it and I had no problem. Or the same thing, like a woman that is pregnant that has um, horrible, uh, like, throws up or has what's called the morning sickness. And then there's other women that go, I'm pregnant and I feel great. I have no, what's the difference between them? The difference is their liver. Their liver, if their liver is jammed up, if your liver gallbladder is jammed up, you are going to have these problems, okay? So if you already have these problems, that means that that's what you've got going on, okay? So it's liver flush is the long-term answer to this. How do I really fix this the underlying cause for this is we've got to clean up the liver and for that we do there's what's called the the mini liver flush there's the coffee enemas um, high levels of DHA meaning essential fatty acids good fats helps to clean out the liver okay it really is good for the liver but then in the meantime which is but I'm suffering right now what can I do um, it's most likely it is what's called low progesterone so if we don't have enough progesterone, um, if we have enough progesterone, you're going to be fine. You're not going to have a whole lot of problems. So there are what's called bioidenticals, and the progesterone that comes from the wild yam, um, uh, a non-toxic form, um, you can do that. There's a cream that we have, which is called the progesterone cream, um, and it's made from wild yams. And you can put this on your body. You put them on your wrists or your your um, ankles, you put it in an area of your body a couple times a day, quarter teaspoon, a couple times a day. Um, 
and some some women too have actually found that it actually works better if you do it what's called intravaginally meaning about a quarter teaspoon twice a day and you put it inside just a little bit inside the vagina because that's where the uterus is and it's really the uterus that's causing the problems that's causing that's then backing up into the liver so because the progesterone is produced in the uterus the the progesterone is also produced in a male prostate and in a male, the prostate is the same organ as a uterus. Male and female is, we're different, but we're the same. We have the same parts. It's just they're in different places. So like the male genitalia is on the outside of the body, the female is on the inside of the body. Well, the prostate is a, uh, is a uterus, and the uterus is a hollowed, hollowed out prostate, right? Well, as an organ, these are hormonal organs and what they do is they secrete hormones and so when you run out of progesterone uh you're going to get a lot of these problems so you can actually take a supplement or in terms of like a this cream which is this progesterone cream and it should make the night sweats go away one of the other things that i see that problem that, that are problems that happen with these hormonal issues especially horrible um hormonal problems like the um um, uh, uh, you know, what I was just talking about, is viral and parasites. Again, if you've listened to my show enough, it's almost like anything you could talk about is, is, is related to some for, sort of infection, some sort of infection, viral infection. So again, like the hepatitis, now I'm not saying a person has hepatitis, but, you know, the hepatitis, the Epstein-Barr, um, also, uh, the cytomegalovirus, which is that's the hand, foot, and mouth disease, chicken pox, the Coxsackie virus, chicken pox, um, shingles. Um, what's one of the other ones? Um, I, I forgot. But in, anyways, these are, oh, um, um, yeah, I just forgot it. But anyways, these are all these different types of viruses, and they can be in our body, and they can, in particular, they can be a liver stress. They can live in our liver. And they can cause a lot of problems with her. And parasites in particular, the uh, what's called a liver fluke, is these, now we get into higher living life forms. We get bacteria, viruses, and then parasites, which is, you know, there's a lot of people in America, a lot of American doctors go, oh, come on. Like, you know, unless you went to Africa or unless you went to Haiti, you don't have these parasites. Well, let me remind you, there's a lot of people that moved over here from there and are now prepared preparing your food and are walking around and parasites um, they can be breathed out they get into dust they are very microscopic they come out of people's bodies and so all you got to do is touch a surface and then touch your nose or touch your mouth or whatever just like a virus um, parasites can get inside your body so many times um, uh, helping people with these type of hormonal type of problems is it can be a real tangled mess but uh, starting with, it, it all relates to the liver, okay? So cleaning up the liver is really the long-term answer. And then the progesterone is something that we can do as a supplement to kind of give you like a cushion for your symptoms, but it doesn't stop there. You want to get to the bottom of it, okay? This is Jason Eagle, your Natural Health Authority. We are coming up to, uh, there's 52 minutes. We go uh, just a... Not a whole lot more time to call in, but the number to call in is 313-272-5600. And um, now we're going to talk about um, apple cider vinegar uh, taken in the morning uh, for helping to help healthy weight as well as for uh, your pancreas. So the pancreas, which is insulin. If you got blood sugar problems, or if you uh, have some insulin problems, or you've got prediabetes in your family, or things like that, you definitely want to work on your pancreas, which is your insulin. Okay. So, but one of the very first things that can be taken for insulin and for body weight, meaning if you want to start losing weight, what is a great thing to do? Is taking this apple cider vinegar, fifteen hundred milligrams, which is just three of these capsules that Premier Research makes. Um, at nighttime, so just before you go to bed, take about three of them, and it creates what's called thermogenesis. It works in your gut, it sanitizes the gut, but it helps you literally, what's called thermogenesis, which is heat. You remember back in the day, which is those sweat suits, which is those like, you know, plastic bag that you wore, and it made you so hot that you sweat. Well, that's thermogenesis, which is if you can increase internal body temperature, 
especially in the guts, then that will make your body actually burn more muscles and, or run the muscles, which will then burn fat. So it's a great way to set up the day and get ready for burning fat. But apple cider vinegar is another thing that actually helps with the um, insulin response. It helps with prediabetes. It helps your pancreas to work better. It helps your pancreas to secrete insulin and produce more insulin better, okay? Now I'm gonna talk about, well, I can, I can get apple cider vinegar anywhere, yes, but there's a lot of people that have trouble taking the apple cider vinegar and they wanna take it as a capsule. And there are out, there's a bunch of companies that make them in capsules, they make them in gummies and things like that. Let me tell you this, is there are some dangerous apple cider vinegars out there. Um, again, most companies, if they can do it cheaper and make more profit off it, they will. And so the apple cider vinegar, others can be very dangerous. Um, you don't know what's in them. Uh, whereas when you're getting stuff from Premier Research Labs, you know exactly, you know the acetic levels, the malic acid levels that are in them, which then helps to measure, uh, or, or, or that's what the acid is, okay? But it, um, they're coming, this is an organic source, and again, it's coming from a production facility that is regulated, and so it's safe. So um, not all apple cider vinegars are, are the same. Now you can just drink some apple cider vinegar and water, but the capsule actually opens up in your stomach and then opens up into your lower digestive tract, which is, it, it doesn't open up until you put it right where you want it. So there really is some great advantages to, rather than just drinking some apple cider vinegar, taking it in a capsule form, okay? All right, we're coming into the home stretch. Oh, I got this one on chronic yeast. You get a lot of people with yeast infections. And I'm not just talking about like the yeast infections in terms of, let's say, uh, women with yeast infections. You got yeast infections in the gut. You got a lot of people. So what is what are the people that you suspect have yeast infections or that have a candida? If you got like the guys that have the beer belly, look at men that have a huge beer belly and you push onto the belly and it feels hard. It feels like a hard basketball. What is that? That is, it, it can't be all just poop and it can't all just be guts. It's like they've been inflated by a basketball. Well, that's what candida is, is literally their, their guts are filled up with immune system foam. And even it can be gases, but mostly what it is, is it's inflammation that is surrounding all of their internal organs. And the reason is, is because their internal organs are infected with yeast. And the foam that's in there, which is part of your body's immune system, is there to try and fight it. But, you know, they're eating things every... And once you get a yeast infection, anything that you eat is a carbohydrate... Um, it's just going to feed it. And so, you know, you get the beer belly guys. Now, it's not just coming from beer, but they eat a lot of cakes and cookies and sugars and all kinds of other stuff. And they're feeding this yeast. Okay, so chronic yeast is, uh, what do we treat it with? Number one, allicidin, garlic. Garlic will kill yeast. Number two, which is um, oregano oil. And oregano oil is very spicy, so it's very important to take it. This company called Biotics makes it ADP, which is just these capsules, and they are emulsified. And what you do is you chew them. They're these big kind of like chalk kind of capulets. And what you do is you chew them into like two or three pieces, and then you swallow. Because if you don't chew them, sometimes they'll go right through the body, and they come right out in the toilet. Um, so taking four of these a day um, will help to then kill the candida in your body. Citrusetal, that's a grapefruit seed extract, that will help to kill yeast as well. It's comfortable to the stomach and, and you'll watch people that, they, it's like, like a, a balloon popped and they deflate. And then another one is hydrochloric acid. Taking hydrochloric acid with your foods if you got candida problems, yeast problems, you will see it like they go away. So, okay, this is the end. This is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority. It's good to talk to you. I'm going to see you again next week. Uh, remember the number. The number one to call in is 313. I forgot it here. <laughs> Sorry. The number to call is 313-272-5600. Jason Eagle, your natural health authority. I will see you next week.
Okay. Bye-bye.